family mode. Good afternoon. Um, welcome to the Glenagan podcast on the UK private housing market. Uh, my name is James Abraham. I'm the economist here at Glenagan. Um, I'm just going to introduce my, um, my fellow con contributors. Um, we've got John Slaughter here, who's the Director of External Affairs at the Home Builders Federation. And we also have Alan Willain, who's the Economic Director here at Glenagan. Um, we're here to talk a little bit about the private housing market, and um, we'll touch on the general economic environment, and also what government is doing to, uh, to boost the housing market or, or otherwise. Um, we'll be taking questions throughout this webinar, so enter your questions in, in, in the box you can see, and we'll, we'll respond to them as when we can. Um, and this session is also being recorded, um, and so the, the, the entire webinar and the slide will be available uh, later this week. So I'm just going to hand over to Alan Lee. He's going to talk a little bit about the, the economy in general. Thanks, James. Um, yeah, so just to start, really start um, setting the scene, really, I wanted to quickly sort of run through sort of the current wider economic environment and, and uh, that of the general housing market, and then you know, really sort of point out how that's perhaps impacting on, on, the, on the new housing uh, supply and housing market as a result of that. Um, I mean, first, obviously, we are all aware of the problems in the, in the wider economy and particularly the weak economic growth uh, that uh, the UK continues to, to suffer due to start a very gradual and painful uh, process of climbing out of, out of the, the last the deep recession we've had. Um, but the consumers, I think, is very much been in the front line of that. Um, if you look at some of the, the data that we've got here, you can see that uh, actually the consumer has been hit hard and hit hard for a long time. Um, I think it's always interesting to know that actually real earnings growth uh, started to really fall away well in advance uh, of the, the economic crisis. Um, we, did, we always saw a, sort of a slowing in real earnings growth in 2007-2008 and then obviously we had the, the sharp pause in, in 2009 as the recession uh, really started to, to bite and, and uh, come home to consumers. Uh, and obviously that's affected their spending pad and particularly their willingness to uh, to be involved in, in, the, in the housing market. So uh, certainly if you look at the sort of the, the current trend over the last year, it's particularly big because consumers hit by obviously weak earnings growth uh, and rising unemployment, um, but also you know, pretty high inflation, all of which is sort of eaten into, uh, eaten into their real earnings and spending power. And um, you don't want that coming up. Though. Sorry, I it. Uh, into their spending power. Um, at a time when um, you know it's really sort of a confidence is already at a low ebb, uh, and you can see the impact that's had on on the housing market. Uh, obviously, consumers have been very reluctant to take on uh, mortgages and, and enter the market, and you can see how, as we went into the recession, uh, mortgage approval for, mortgage approvals fell away very very sharply uh, in terms of the mortgage, number of mortgage approvals uh, for for house purchase. Uh, the blue line, and that fell away very, very sharply and dragged down house prices, house prices as a result of that. What we've seen since then, really, is um, something of an equilibrium uh, being established at a sort of a, a, a low ebb. Um, transactions have gradually started to, to stabilize and, and recover a little bit, um, but that's really effectively stabilized house price inflation uh, at best. In fact, in sort of a, in real terms, in terms of our inflation, they've been, they've been falling back a bit. Mm. Um, so it's you know it's a sort of a, a sort of it's, the market is working at a very very slow slow pace at the moment in terms of the wider housing market and that I think has had a, a clear impact for the new house sales. Um, and again, you can see that even more perhaps even more dramatically if you look at, at net lending because uh, under the current climate, uh, not only people have not been taking on uh, new mortgages, uh, those that have mortgages have been actually focusing on on paying down the debt they've got. So um, the, the net, the net uh, mortgage situation is especially dramatic. Um, so it's quite a looks like quite a bleak picture. But coming back to that consumer side of things, I think actually there's a bit of more of a positive picture coming forward again to this year. We've had all of that bad news, um, and I'm, I'm feeling that as we go through the, the course of this year, we should actually start to see consumer confidence starting to recover. And there are a few sort of um, sort of positive signs coming through. Um, mortgage approvals data that came out today from the Bank of England said so it's a two-year high. So all of those sort of things are sort of sort of best draws in the wind that wind that things are starting to turn around and and um, and it's good news. 
certainly if you look at the, the, the history there, you can see how that weakness has impacted upon uh, on new housing activity. This is uh, official data for uh, property and transactions and also for uh, private completions in England. And you can see that um, the the private completions follow that, that decline in the, in the wider housing market. And if you look at in terms of new new housing completions now, they're still running at about 11% of overall mm -hmm. transactions. So they're trying to in where, they in where they should be, in, 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 it was a small small market, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah um, so more all right. That's right. So, in fact, if you look at property transactions, they're 47% of their peak in yeah. 2006. Completions down 46% of their peak, which was in, in 2007. So, um, yeah, there's quite a lot of uh, synergies there. Um, you can see that there is quite a close relationship there between completions um, and the actual wider housing market. Uh, and there's been a similar pattern in, as a result of that in, in planning approvals. You can see that, again, a small rise uh, from, the, from the, the low point we saw in, uh, in, in 2009. Um, but by and large, I think house has has been responding to, to the slow market conditions. Um, and the fact that we've already got a, a supply of outstanding provisions that they can, yeah. they can draw upon. Um, in fact, a lot of the provisions we're seeing coming through at the moment are, are sort of... Um, renewals and amendments to existing provisions so they could take those site, um, sites forward and would it change uh, economic Yeah, and quite, and quite, quite often sites, uh, arrangements around sites, around Section 106 and things like that have had to be renegotiated, um, particularly um, in uh, the Midlands and the North and in many cases because otherwise site, site viability was, uh, was an issue. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so all of which is left things at a, a bit of a, a low rate, but uh, and there's something of a, a, a gap as well, isn't it, John? Really? Yeah. Um, there's certainly um, yeah, every need um, to uh, build more homes, um, and this is, is a, an indication of uh, where we, we we've been headed um, in the, the the recent times. Um, we we've estimated at HBF that um, we probably have something approaching by now, a cumulative shortfall of something like one million homes that should have been built that haven't been built over, over many years. But you can see from this graph that um, we're now opening up potentially a much bigger gap going forward yeah. uh, where we've got a level of household formation that's running at 230,000 or so a year. Um, but build levels which are yeah. a great deal more than 100,000. Exactly, it's a half that, isn't it? Mm. So, um, you know, potentially, I mean, it's a it's sort of a, it's not necessarily housing demand in the sense that you know what the spending power to go out there at the moment, but it's it's pent up demand effectively, isn't it? It's, it's sort it, of housing needs. So there, there, there is pent up demand for sure. Um, if you talk to house builders, actually for some time, not 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 just now, but going back ever since we got through the very worst downturn in 2008, 2009. Uh, you quite often hear builders saying that uh, you know they have a lot of people visiting sites or visiting their websites uh, to look, look at the property who uh, have had problems completing uh, a mortgage application, getting a mortgage, in order to, to proceed with a purchase. So I think circumstantially, anecdotally, we would say that the evidence is there that there's a lot of pent up demand. Uh, but this is another indication of um, just uh, what the situation is. And, yeah. In our forward estimate, is that um, in order to make good the shortfall, as well as meeting new households uh, over the next uh, coming up to 20 years, uh, then we ought to be building at something like 270,000 a year. Okay. And that's just it's just for Greenland as well, isn't yeah, it? Just for yeah, yeah. the part yeah. of the UK yeah. on top of that, um, and that, that's much higher than it's been for well, I guess it's been the same too. Uh, well, you'd have, to, you'd have to go back to the probably the 70s yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to, to see that level of actual physical completions um, when, of course, we had uh, a very high level of uh, council house building, which isn't, isn't there now. So one of the other uh, issues that, that we all face is how do we how do we sort of build that level when there isn't going to be that level of, probably going to be that level of council house provision in the future, yeah. anything entirely likely. Yeah. I mean, so that was interesting, uh, the, the sort of latest data that we, well, we produced together and published recently on um, planning commissions, it, it, it's, it's striking from that actually that um, certainly you can see the sharp fall in, in, um, on the private side in terms of planning commissions over the last two or three, three four years. Um, but what was striking um, about the last quarter figures is that um, whilst the private commissions were, were down slightly, uh, obviously having fallen quite a long way already, um, the, the big 
factor that was dragging things down was the, the, all the halving and all that around halving it in social housing. Uh, so you know, there's, there's a, it's a bigger and growing gap. Yeah, I mean, what, what we've seen on the social housing side was that um, both, uh, to some extent, both the current government, but certainly the previous government, uh, a forward shifted a lot of public expenditure. Uh, as a response to the uh, immediate uh, impact of the crisis, um, so to meet housing need, but also because of the economic benefits of doing so. Uh, that, that's now essentially uh, worked its way through the system. You're into the new comprehensive spending review package much more, which um, has a, a, a smaller amount of public money going into it. The, 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 the entry of the new affordable rent model, and uh, there's still a lot of work going on in the social and affordable sector about how, how to make that work best, how to switch assets in order to um, produce the level of affordable provision that people would want to see. Yes, and they're sort of allowing the, the change to rent control, the rent level, yeah. for example, good way of, yeah. of be able to raise more private we're, we're kind of in a sort of transitional phase yeah. um, where probably we expect to see um, affordable um, uh, approvals for planning consents and start to, to, to increase uh, again uh, in, in a year or so of time. Um, but um, there's some uncertainty about how, how much that will yes. actually happen, I think. Okay. I mean, one of the, to return to the sort of private mm -hmm. side of things, one of the, the striking things is obviously first time buyers have traditionally been a, yeah. a key element, uh, A, for the general housing market, but also to give the new house sale. Um, I thought what was just, um, striking about this, this graph is you can see the, the, the sharp fall away really in terms of yeah. um, first-time buyers coming into the market. Um, but also in terms of the, the wider house price earnings ratio, um, how that's still, you know, it's come back from where it was at the peak, but it's still mm -hmm. high, still yeah. very high. And I, and I think, I think in our view, that's very much a sort of indication of, of stress in terms of lack of uh, sufficient supply overall yeah. in the market. Um, otherwise, you would probably expected to see a sort of, uh, well, the levels not get so high in the first thing, um, <laughs> uh, but, but, but otherwise come, come back more than they have. Um, but the, and the, and the, the other interesting thing is that the actual decline in the number of first-time buyers isn't just a function of the uh, financial crash. Mm -hmm. um, it was a, a process that was well entrained before that uh, as a, a reflection of the uh, sort of affordability stress in the market and, again, the shortage of supply. But it's been exacerbated since the crash by the sort of constraints on the mortgage yeah. market. And in practice, it's the first time buyers um, who've been asked um, at, at sort of worst points to find 25% of the Yes, that's right. Yes, right. So, I mean, that was the interesting thing. You see that there's all this sort of rise in, in mortgage approvals, but it's it from very low base. And yeah. Can first time buyers get into the market? Well, the fact in mind, we've got a question from Natalia, um, who's mm -hmm. asking about um, the first buy scheme. Mm -hmm. What effect has that had on the market? First buy scheme um, has an objective, and here's a slide we prepared earlier, as they said, that uh, has an objective of about 10,500 sales. Um, so uh, that, that, that's, that's welcome, but obviously in terms of the total picture is still a, a relatively small amount. But um, uh, and, and it's, it's a kind of variant on earlier schemes. We had Home Buy Direct under the previous mm -hmm. government. Uh, which had a, a, a larger overall uh, volume than that in its various guises. Uh, so um, this is the shared equity scheme. House builders are also doing their own shared equity scheme. Yes. Um, and they have been very successful. They are attractive to first-time buyers. Um, but um, they're relatively capital in intensive mm -hmm. in terms of balance sheet capacity. So um, uh, what we're talking about now and what we're working on the big scheme we're working on now is the mortgage indemnity scheme, um, MIG on this slide, uh, which is going to be called New Buy, um, okay. uh, which is a different approach altogether. Um, and that will actually make um, available capital go much much further in terms of bringing yeah. first-time buyers into the market. So what are the key differences between the first buy scheme and the new buy scheme? The real difference is that um, there will be, um, it'll be it, it's looking at a 95% uh, LGV mortgage uh, for those who uh, sort of qualify to, to, to take one on. And that hasn't, a 95% LGV mortgage hasn't been generally available in, in the open market uh, in, in recent times, uh, particularly for first time buyers. Um, so uh, that's, that's one big difference. The, 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 hopefully this sort of um, first buy scheme is, is, is shared equity. So, um, it's sort of actually 75% equity uh, up, up front. Um, the, um, the other difference is that the house builder would put in 
uh, 3.5% of the sales value into a capital fund, um, and those would be pooled uh, to cover potential risk for the lenders. And in order to make the whole scheme work in a capitally efficient way for all the participants, the government's underpinning the scheme with a, a, a government guarantee. Okay. Uh, so it's a different it's a different formula, which means that um, both the deposit for the purchaser is, is kept at five percent, uh, which is, is manageable even in these tough times we think. And it's less capital intensive for, for the house builders. So in, that, in other words, they can do more of this than they could of, uh, of a shared equity scheme where they were putting 10 or 15 percent yeah. uh, potentially of the, of the capital value in. So um, we, we really do hope this is going to make a, so it's a lot more cost effective and open up. Yeah. The and as, we, as we say on the slide here, a sort of objective of up to 100,000 sales over, th over three years. I haven't said three years yet, it's over a three year period. So that, that, that is a significant intervention, and we're hoping that's going to go live very, very yeah. shortly. So, I mean, in terms of you know, additions to the market, I mean, that, that is quite yeah. substantial, isn't it? And all that. Yeah, I, I, it is. And I mean, that, that potentially also unlocks other activity in the market, because yeah. although it, it's not restricted to first time buyers, but we expect it to mainly be you know, first time buyers. And it's, I think it's everyone in the property market would say that if you, if you can um, assist first time buyers in a sensible way, that will actually help stimulate activity more generally in the market. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the hope is also that the, the benefit of this will be bigger than the yeah. scheme itself. That's why I mean, it's interesting, you saw earlier on, the, the, the same referring to earlier on, the, the relationship between com and new, new house completions and, and the wider house market activity. And that you can get more first time yeah. buyers, and it's going to boost the the market in a more general way as well, and that starts to rebuild confidence. It means it makes it, you know, make, makes it ultimately easier for, for second and third time movers to yeah. move because you, you can complete the chains. So, yeah. yeah, we have the first time buy numbers are sort of two hundred thousand as opposed to six hundred thousand uh, mm -hmm. ten, ten years or so ago. It's a big, yeah. big difference in the market. And then there's other government initiatives mm -hmm. as well. No, there's the public yeah. land ones. Yeah. Public land one is. Um, it's going to take a little bit of time to, to, to reach um, uh, significant volume yeah. because these, this is public land that's, that's mainly been identified already, but it'll have to be uh, tendered and bid for, yeah. and then it will have to go through the, the planning and uh, construction consent process. But in two to three years' time, that potentially opens up the door to a lot more yeah. um, housing coming uh, on stream as well. Um, and uh, the government is prepared to be innovative about um, helping to make it work, and they, they're offering a possibility of, of, of buy now, pay later for mm. the builders, so you don't necessarily have to put capital up, up, up yeah. front to, to help get the site started. There's, there will certainly be potential for partnerships um, with um, public landowners and, and other arrangements, I think, that they could produce some interesting, okay. interesting benefits. So, um, again, although though it's going to take longer than the, uh, the mortgage indemnity schemes get into to its stride, yeah. it, it, it would it's, be a, it's a longer term addition to supply, isn't it, effectively? And yeah. well, it's not a short term, there, but it's, no, but it's, um, we, it's going to help. So. Uh, we, and we need a mixture of yeah. short and medium yeah. and longer term initiatives, yeah. I think. Yeah, but there's, there's an immediate crisis, but also, as yeah. you're saying earlier about the long term under supply of yeah. new housing, it's starting to address that as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm going to return to sort of the um, sort of say the nearer term now, because um, certainly I think I think there are some, some positive news there as well, as well as the sort of longer longer term initiatives and things like first buy and the mortgage indemnity will help to uh, add to this. I think as we go over the course of, of this year, um, but I think there are, does seem to be sort of renewed uh, optimism among house builders. I mean, I think particularly the big firms they've got all the the right downs behind them um, and established it and they're actually going forward and. Mm. Uh, are becoming more more profitable now. You're obviously, you haven't taken those those write downs uh, into account of their of their land banks. Um, but certainly, the one of the things we've been tracking is uh, as Glenagan is when we look through our data is is the number of projects um, that are, are being put on hold or, or coming off hold uh, each month. Um, and I think looking at the private housing side, I mean, these are schemes that are at various stages in the, the sort of pre-construction uh, development process. So some of them may be just yeah, sort of a pre-planning stage, but some of them will have detailed planning. And you can see the, uh, the surge of projects being put on hold, uh, sort of in 2009, early 2010. But things have sort of stabilised uh, then. Mm -hmm. And also, I see, see if you look at the last last few months, actually they're falling away again. And there's more sites being reactivated and taken taken and taken forward. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it's early early signs, I think, but but there's a positive picture. Um, but um, 
you know, they are looking to take. Yeah, and I, 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 I think if you read the trading statements from the from the large companies, they they probably have been tending to to um, uh, get back to increasing um, the number of active mm -hmm. active sites. Um, yeah. gradually. So I, I agree. I think there's some positive um, signs yeah. out there. And certainly, if you look at the, the, the graph on, on the right as well, you can see that certainly we've been picking up a, a rise in the, in the value of private housing start, starting on site, which is taking and it very much fits in mm -hmm. operating from more more sites here. Um, so this is sort of a six month rolling total, and we're looking around 20% uh, increase year on year. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you look at the last sort of uh, three months, uh, the data there is it's a much sharper increase compared to the year going out. In part, that's uh, due to the fact that um, we were three months to, to February last year, we concluded an yeah. awful lot of bad wintry and cold weather, yeah. uh, which meant the uh, sites weren't being uh, taken taken mm -hmm. forward. Um, but nevertheless, I think it, it's a good sign of the, the market is, you know, certainly confident to live in house builders that seem to be improving. Very much fitting with those, those sort of um, statements they've been making. Yeah, well, there's, there's been a whole raft of trading statements from the, the, the major companies in uh, the last few weeks. and. I think they're pretty much all in the same territory of being positive. Um, uh, it's been, it's partly reflected the fact that they um, shifted their product a bit um, to respond to where the market is, um, given the overall circumstances. Um, but by doing that, um, they have um, begun to increase volumes a bit, and forward sales are also in positive territory. You do year on year on year comparison. And certainly when we've been looking at that, we can see that sort of shift uh, underway. I mean, I think some of that reflects, uh, at a regional level, um, the fortunes of different parts of the, of the UK economy. Um, given the cutbacks in, in public sector uh, activity and spending uh, and employment we're seeing at the moment, I think the north of, north of England, um, Scotland and Wales, and they're particularly vulnerable to, yeah. uh, to, to retrenchment in terms of consumer confidence in here, uh, compared with Perhaps uh, southern England, uh, where private, private sector accounts for a much a larger proportion of employment, and certainly perhaps employment yeah. factors are looking more positive going forward. And I think there are there are some initial signs that it is already starting to um, to happen um, in terms of planning approval data. Mm. Um, we saw, sort of looking back over the last couple of years, you can see that uh, it was particularly the Midlands in, in and. and uh, and the North of England in 2010, when we had that initial uh, surge of, uh, of interest, and things were looking more positive, and that, that, they fell away last year. Yeah. Um, where Southern England, if you particularly taken London out of the equation, mm. was, was more positive. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other the other factor is as well as the type of uh, projects that are, that are uh, coming forward. Uh, we looked at um, the type of units that are being built um, in terms of looking at recent planning planning mm. uh, approvals. Uh, and the type of dwellings that are involved with that by by planned or you know, anticipated start date, you can see that actually over the sort of the next two three years, it's going to be much more of a swing away from apartments towards. Uh, uh, yeah, and that, I mean that's that's very much the way the market had, has gone, um, and and that's what I meant by uh, kind of responding to where yeah. where the market is. Yeah. Um, I mean that, that that's that's. In, in effect, um, a reflection of the difficulties that the first time buyer market has. Yeah. Um, but uh, people who have a reasonable amount of equity, um, uh, particularly in, in the southern half of the country, um, the market has been healthier. So the market has, in terms of the ability to, to, to complete sales, um, the, 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 where the market has has tended to, to have its equilibrium and balance more has been in terms of the family housing market. Um, uh, so sort of larger um, semi-detached and detached homes rather than um, uh, start starter properties um, where there was probably a higher proportion of, of, of yeah. um, at the, at the, uh, the height of the, the boom period. Um, so uh, that's a progressive thing because obviously um, old consent has to be built out, but as um, new sites are coming forward, as um, there are possible where, where there are more possibilities to replant sites, yeah. so you see so a quite a bit of replanting, isn't it? Do yeah. reflect that changing market? Um, and I think that's what the industry does well. Yeah. I mean, the industry, you know, um, reads the market, it, it responds to it, it, it does what it can um, to uh, to keep things going, and, that, and that's been the result, which has meant that um, by by sort of um, 
giving a different orientation or a different balance to, to, to the product on, on sites progressively as, as time has gone on. Uh, you've been able to, um, to to maintain sales and um, build up, build sales levels to some extent, um, with also um, a kind of healthy um, profitability if you if you get get it right. Yes. Okay. Well, it's interesting. Is we, one of the other things I look I look at was the sort of activity of the sort of seven listed house builders, um, really sort of sort of from the larger larger firms, um, and again you can see how they've been. Uh, responding to those, those changes in the market conditions. And in terms of value of sites they were opening up, um, now the, the, the green, when things were initially starting to look a bit brighter in 2010, you can see they were starting to take sites forward. Clearly last year was a, a bit of a year of retrenchment, although things did start to, to brighten up towards the end of, end of the year. Um, and this in terms of, it's purely in terms of a, a project start. Um, but, um, so yeah, we sort of saw an 8% decline last year in terms of the number of sites that are opening, but a 20% decline in the, the number of units related to those mm -hmm. sites. Um, and I think that comes back to, and I suppose the first sign of the point that you're picking on about them opening, working from, from more sites in yeah. a strange sort of way, because I think there's been a general trend away from, from larger sites. Um, this is looking at figures across the, the industry as a whole in terms of planning commissions. Mm -hmm. You can see that it's been quite sharp fall away in the 100 plus yeah. sites. Yeah. Uh, it's been smaller sites that held, mm -hmm. held, held firm. Um, and I think the reason for that is obviously, as you said, it's a reflection of the fact that we've got a very big market at the moment um, where it's going to take a long time to, to bed out these larger sites, whereas you, know, you, you can and just going up and, the, and the larger sites may potentially have you know, sort of quite significant upfront. So yes. uh, investment issues, but you know, in infrastructure and things like that, yes, uh, which uh, again would be something that uh, is, is more difficult in in, in, in tougher times. Mm. So I take this point to ask you. I mean, the, the results we've seen with the top seven mm. seven house builders. How representative of that is is you know, how representative is the trend of, of of them increasing building over the past couple of years um, of the market as a whole um, with with them refocusing building. On, on family style houses, is that what's happening overall? I think the, the, the general move towards family style housing has been a, mm. a national. I mean, obviously, there's some some exceptions. I mean, one of the, the classics is the uh, budget homes. Yes, because um, they're, they're much London focused. Um, they, they're, they're in a particular type of market. market. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I think there's a, there's a general trend there, and I think other you know, other parts of the market have actually been responding to that. But I think also, I think that's the, those larger firms are being better placed actually. Mm -hmm. That's the land bank right down, so having a, a long behind them now. Actually, better placed in other respects to start opening up and taking sites forward than perhaps some of the sort of more sort of smaller um, companies who, who are very much tied to bank finance. Uh, yes, I mean, that, I mean, that, I mean that there is definitely. A, Difference in position of you know, the smaller companies, uh, where they have been traditionally reliant on bank finance and mm -hmm. project finance, and, and that has remained tough. Um, uh, and so they're they're they're, they're sort of um, living more immediately, if you yeah. like. Um, they don't they they, they they can't necessarily kind of migrate gradually through a, a land bank in the way that a, a larger company could. Um, I, I would, have, I, I, as far as I know, I mean, they, they, they will be responding within that so yeah, so yeah. sort of market signals. When I, we're, we're essentially talking about market signals. So it's an interesting point, you know, to, to sort of put another perspective on this question of um, suddenly shifting the, the, the mix of um, sites towards more family housing. I think um, I'm right in saying that the figures show pre-crash that um, uh, there was a, a sort of um, a, a bigger uh, increase in the price of uh, uh, family housing compared to mm. apartments because in terms of the market as a whole, family housing was relatively undersupplied. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, or, although there are other circumstances, the, the market signal was in any event to, to build a, a yeah. bigger amount of family housing, I think. That's right. I mean, there was a price of crash, there was the first time buy market, but increasingly mm. it was the buy to let market that yeah. got those apartments. So. Um, yeah, that was, the, that was a big fact. I mean, obviously, I mean, there's been some. Um, we haven't talked about that, but there's been some sort of up, um, 
what was on the end of the bike to let people market as well. As well yeah. um, but the holy grail, the holy grail of the sector, and the government having another go at this in terms of current policy initiatives is whether we can encourage institutional investment into uh, into the housing sector and perhaps particularly into into the rental sector. Yeah. Um, so uh, so Adrian Montague has got another review going on. Okay. I mean, it would, new build would be the logical. Sort of roots into that into yeah. the sector in that sense, wouldn't it? Really, yeah. from an institutional basis, you're not going to want to sort of a, a sort of myriad of different properties scattered across yeah. an area. You're going to want to have sort of yeah. And there's been quite, quite a big debate about you know, whether you know, have we sort of reached the peak uh, forever in terms of the percentage of the housing market that is going up the most, because we have seen a, a gradual reduction for the last few years in the percentage of households who are owner occupiers and uh, uh, an increase in the proportion that's in uh, particularly private renting yeah. sector. Um, well, I, I, I don't think we know. And certainly the, all, the, all the polls show there remains an undimmed aspiration to be owner occupiers. Yeah. Uh, but of course the financial circumstances are quite to making that. that it's pushed the average age to the third time by half an hour, isn't it really? It's sort of 37 or something. Uh, it, it, it's 30, 37 if you have no assistance from yeah. parents or yeah. uh, friends. Which is a fairly sobering statistic. <laughs> right, that's it. Yeah. I mean, I mean you know, we, we, we say that, of course, you know, that is a sign of the housing stress I was talking about earlier, but, mm. but it's also for the country as a whole, it's a big big social issue. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we shouldn't, shouldn't forget that. Yeah. Um, at this point, the second around everyone who's listening, um, if you've got any questions, please send them in. Um, you can use the box, um, I think, to the right hand side of your screen. Um, yep, yeah, send any questions that you want to answer. Yeah. Thanks, James. I um I just wanted to sort of move on to sticking with the actual sort of um, private uh, uh, major major developer side of things. I was thinking about how they they've, they've scaled that number of start, uh, projects they've started um, last year. But I think the encouraging thing is you can see they have been focusing on building up their development pipeline. The, the number of commissions has uh, been increasing um, over the last couple of years. Um, and in fact, the number of sites that they secured permission on sort of grew 10% last year. The number of units related to those eight grew up by 8%. Um, There's even more marked contrast in the, in the preceding years, or 24% like the number of sites they were taking forward, but much smaller increase in number of units. I think that, that reflects this this shift away, you know, in terms of the average average plot size, there's sort of 16% decline in the average plot, plot size that they've been taking forward over the last two years. Um, I think that, that's intriguing because it very much fits in again with their, their comments about wanting to, to sell for more, for more sites. And I think it reflects the fact that you've got a, a, a thin market and they're looking to try and obviously try and preserve margins, but also to, to increase sales. Um, and in that sort of market, obviously, they want to put a flood of property on, on, on a, into a very, very small, small area in that local area. Um, so plus, yeah. I think it gives, gives scalability going forward as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sorry, okay. it does. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, that is an interesting set of statistics, really. Um, but the, the, although um, clearly they're not right next door to each other necessarily, yeah. but I think it's it, people. People in the industry would generally say that um, uh, if you, if you have more sites active, then you, know, you are going to overall sell sell more. Sell, sell more. Yeah. Um, and the sales rate may vary within the site. Mm. And so in terms of um, if, if circumstances improve, as we hope they, they will, and the government schemes um, back that up, uh, then there is there is um, uh, short term the option to build build sites at a faster rate yeah. um, if the sales, sales opportunity is better. OK, and yeah, they can certainly accelerate their working progress yeah. and, and you know, to, to meet sort of strengthening demand, effectively. Yeah. So I, mean, I think that, I think that seems to be to me, it struck me as a deliberate strategy uh, and, a, and a positive one that they can see the current market improving over the next couple of years, essentially with a bit of government initiatives and hopefully a, a strengthening wider economy. Uh, and they're yeah. going up to do that. And, and, and hopefully also, and the other thing we haven't mentioned that, that from our point of view is important, is the planning reform yes. that we're waiting for um, with great anticipation the uh, final version of the National Planning Policy Framework. Um, and lots of different views have been expressed about that, but um, there is um, hopefully an opportunity through that to uh, increase supply by um, having a different type of conversation, mm. more positive engagement at, at, at local level. Um, so uh, we hope we hope that that will reinforce things. Um, yeah.
So it's government policy, the other thing uh, that uh, is going on and, and it isn't perhaps so much commented on as a general phenomenon. The government is doing a lot um, to look at um, measures of incentives or free, yeah. freeing up possibilities both for um, developers and for local authorities. And if you put the whole package together, then you know, if, we, if, we, if we were having this conversation in another couple of years' time, the landscape might look quite, <laughs> quite different. We hope it will look different. That's right. I mean, it seems to be very much a, is, um, sort of two issues. One is the current problems in getting out of sort of current sort of crop in the market, and then um, a lot of these other these reforms are going on are also actually setting a, a longer term framework that can really yeah, it, 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 it's, it's about yes, right, creating the, the sort of the business environment um, through um, planning policy and regulation and financial measures uh, where they're appropriate. Um, that actually gives a platform for growth because yeah. we know we know the need is for growth. Um, so the question is beyond that, beyond the sort of short-term um, financial issues that, that we 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 talked about. Um, the, the, the bigger, longer-term question is whether um, the government gets the measures right that will support the growth that, that really ought to be taking place. Yeah, and it's, it's not um, it's not just growth in the in the um, in the housing housing market and the private housing market for the, for the benefit of the industry. I think it's for, for, for the benefit of the, of the wider economy and the, and the yeah. industry as a whole as well. Because certainly if you look at sort of our data, you can see that we've got a sort of a, a, anticipating a, a climb, sort of 9% growth this year and, and 6% in terms of the value of, of project starts. Um, still a long way off where we were in 2007, um, but nevertheless still, you know, recovery. Um, and, that, and that's a real positive going forward, I think, over the next couple of years. Mm. Uh, I think it has implications for the wider economy as well, doesn't it? I mean, if you look at um, uh, private, uh, the private sector housing as a as a proportion of, of the economy is GDP. Yeah. I think this, this, this graph, I think, which you provided is, is quite striking. Actually, it shows how um, over the course of the session, you know, really, we've, you know, it's shrunk. Not even the economy shrink. Housing shrunk as a proportion of the economy as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we are at a, at a very low ebb. Um, and, and, and there's, there's, but the positive side is that there is there is big upside potential. Absolutely. And if you bear in mind that, um, and looking, obviously looking rather longer term here, um, but if you bear in mind that even uh, in 2004 to mm -hmm. seven, um, the sort of height of uh, the activity when uh, housing output was actually increasing, we still weren't building as much as we needed to build. Yeah. So we actually ought to be, um, if we were getting thing, everything right, then the GDP contribution ought to be even higher. Well, that's right. I mean, if we're looking at sort of a, a growth over the next next couple of years, actually, potential upside means actually we'll be boosting the recovery, economic recovery. And, well. and that's definitely where the government is. I think there's no doubt that um, the, the cabinet is, um, and indeed the prime minister is very um, fully behind housing uh, at the moment as one of the keys to economic recovery. And, uh, um, that, that, that's obviously good news um, for everyone in the industry, and uh, we, we really hope, as a result, the government's going to follow through on, on all the measures they've set out. Well, it's going to be an interesting month as well, isn't it? With, um, we've got the budget, um, and we've got the planning planning changes all coming through. Yeah. So, I mean, all of that is to perhaps uh, have yeah, an on it. Definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely exciting time. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, and, and, and the focus on housing is is, is, is very is very high, yeah. Yeah, which is which is great. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yeah, I think we're um, we're almost at the end of, of uh, the, the set of slides we have. Um, so there doesn't seem to be a, 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 a huge level of, of questions. Okay, there are no, no additional points that have come up. So, um, I mean, if there's any other other points that you want to, to make at this point, John, just to summarise things, perhaps. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I, I think um, from our point of view, as a summary. Um, I've been saying in other contexts that, that um, we've been operating at a fairly, we found a kind of new steady state, mm. but it's clearly a diminished steady state. Yes. Um, and clearly, um, from no one's point of view, I think society's point of view, government's point of view, all the industry's point of view, where we want to be. Um, there, there, there definitely are uh, beginnings of some mm. uh, positive signs, which is which is welcome. But um, we need to get these bigger picture issues that we've been talking about yeah. right as well, in order to really underpin and sustain um, the kind of level of growth that, yeah. that, that we ought to be looking for. Um, but I think we're cautiously optimistic that we have a great opportunity to begin to to move in that direction in a more sustained way, and certainly. 
um, I think the, the industry, um, that if you're looking at the, the published results and so on, show that companies have um, managed their way through a difficult mm -hmm. set of circumstances and they are getting into, into more positive uh, waters now. So from the business point of view, um, the opportunity to, to, to begin to step up um, is, is there. And, and what, what we're doing as a trade body is very much sort of working to try and ensure that the, the public policy agenda is in the And I think it's going to need to be, given the, the depth of the session, that um, for construction industry is so well, it's going to be um, it's important we've got a, a steady and, su and sustained period of growth uh, and recovery, yeah. um, really to make sure that the capacity is there and yeah. capacity, new capacity can come on. on yeah, because, because well. absolutely, because um, yeah, the classic issue here is that if you grow beyond, there is, there is as we touched on, I mean, there, there's certainly some capacity to, in, uh, to ability to increase um, output um, uh, by in, increasing um, build rates and so yeah. on. But beyond a certain point, then you have to invest in, in, in new capacity, uh, new staff, and so forth. And um, you need you need confidence um, that you're not uh, just talking about yeah. temporary situation to, do that. to, to attract the labour in yeah. and make sure. Yeah. People have the confidence to. to it's, 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 also, it's also an issue for the supply chain. Yeah. Um, that the supply chain will have to bring back or bring on new capacity yeah. because the supply chain has been shrunk yeah. um, or, or downsized in terms of its output uh, for obvious reasons. Um, so that has to come back as well. And everybody needs to feel confident enough to, mm -hmm. to invest in bringing that capacity. Absolutely. I mean, to sum up, I mean, we, we seem to have had quite a tough few years following the, the recession. Yeah. Um, but we seem to be at a point now where a lot of people around the industry do have sort of cautious optimism. Mm. Um, what do you think needs to be in place over the next year to sort of foster this optimism and to need to capitalise on, on, on the genuine week? Well, probably the two big things are that we have a successful mortgage and energy scheme, because yeah. I think that really will make a big difference in terms of market sentiment um, and, and will have a bigger impact than even the size of the scene itself suggests, and, and probably um, getting the planning reform right. Because I think um, the other the other potential obstacle to increasing output is if um, future land supply is constrained, uh, as is tended to be. Uh, we haven't t talked about that specifically in, in, in our earlier uh, comments and slides, um, but, but, but there's no question that the planning system over the last 20 years has effectively constrained overall land supply for housing. Uh, so uh, if we want to grow output, um, an industry will need the confidence that they're going to be able to take a sufficient volume of science through the system, because otherwise that again becomes... Yeah. Yeah. So it really comes down to the supply of finance and land. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, do you, do you mirror, mirror those, those comments? Out? I think so. And, but also, I think, I want to say, pleasing from the consumer side, it, it's going to be the confidence you know, for, yeah. for them to, to, to want to be able to take on those things, both take on those mortgages. Yeah, uh, and, and that's interesting because I think, you know, as I touched on earlier, that there, there has been probably, uh, e even at the worst points, there's probably been more consumer confidence in a way than might at first appear. Yeah. Uh, because our members would say that they, they could always have sold um, a higher volume. And uh, it, it, since 2007, uh, most points than they've actually been able to do. Um, and, and a lot of people have, because of the constraints in the mortgage market, mm. a lot of people have, have had difficulty actually nailing down a, a, a mortgage on yeah. But they were in a position, and they were perfectly able to take on um, the financial commitment of paying back a mortgage. It's just they, they couldn't actually access a mortgage because the mortgage funding yeah. wasn't actually yeah. there. And that sort of structural reform there of the financial market can be. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm getting the mortgage uh, market reform yeah. right is, is, is essential. Yeah. Okay, well that about wraps us up. Um, thank you for listening to our webinar on the UK private housing. Um, thank you for, for, uh, for John for coming in and thank you for Alan as well for contributing so eloquently. Um, remember this session has been recorded so it will be available to, to download and listen back to later this week. Um, there's also a joint HBS and Flanagan report which you can consult for, for more information on some of the topics discussed. And if you have any more questions, um, you can always catch us on Twitter or, or email us um, any, any feedback you have. Um, thank you for listening and goodbye. Thank you.